Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omnus and today I will uh, react to the top 10 classic duets. In the tunnel is Paul McCartney and Michael Jackson. Which in the case I believe the girl is mine from the trailer album. I always thought it was kind of like the weakest song of the album. So I wouldn't really say it's a classic duet. But the song or the song, the video is 6 years ago and it's only 9 minutes long. So... This is classic Word Mojo Rider, you gotta love it. Um, I Yeah, I can't quite recall. I have like a really itchy nose right now, sorry. Um, I heard it through the grapevine by Mark from Gaze, I believe the slideshow, so... I'll be back in a bit, my, I'm like... My entire inside for my fucking mouth is itchy right now, terrible feeling. I'll let it play and I'll be back in a bit. Fuck sake, man. Fuck this out. Step right up, step right up. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, gather round. Two voices for the price of one. Who doesn't love a bargain? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 classic duets. Number 10, Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder, Ebony and Ivory. Wait, what the fuck? Didn't watch, Mo didn't watch Mojo Pan this. Well, I have to rewind it for a bit. Oh yes, that's classic Watch Mojo music right now. And it just kicks in straight off. You know, that's why I love uh, about the old Watch Mojo feeders. They just kick off and they, you know, they get to the point and they just get it on with. I, I love this. I love those kind of videos. Now they just go on forever. Number ten, Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder, Ebony and Ivory. Watch Mojo fucking slam this. Um, I, I believe the song is racist because it uses like white and black keys in the parts that Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder are singing. So the song is racist as fuck. But yeah, there you go. And Ivory. I actually really like the song and I never really got the hatred that the song got. Oh, it's racist. They're playing this in white and black keys in the, t in the way they're, you know, they're singing off of each other. If Stevie sings, the black keys are used. If Paul sings, the white keys are used. I, I believe that's the reason why it's hated, I believe. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure about it, but... Watch Marjorie was hating on the song and people hated it because they love the song, but... It is kind of like, it's literally a black or white opinion. You either love or hate this song. I, I really love it, so I, I don't get it, but you know. It's, it's, a it's a classic song. It's a classic song with Stevie on piano and Paul singing. It's great. That sometimes less is more. The effortless vocals of Them especially sitting on the key, Stevie on the black key and Paul wal walking on the whiteboard. Raises as fuck, but it's a great song. <laughs> I never got the hatred for this song, so there you go. People also really hate uh, the, the Paul McCartney Christmas song. I actually really like that song, uh, you know, but I really like Paul McCartney in general, so... I really don't get the hate that he gets, you know, for a solo career. In the Beatles, he's of course invincible, but outside of that, he is a very flawed person, but there you go. He, you know, he just worked great all over John Lennon, and after that, he just became a silly grandpa in a way. It's kind of low key racist, but I still like it though. I'm kind of a low key racist too, so that might be why the song appeals to me. Number nine. John Travolta and Oliver Newton John. You're the one that I want. Uh, oh, you're the one that I want. Da -da 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 -da. Fuck this song. Um, where's this from? This is from. I want to say Cream. That's a band. Uh, Cream Scream. No, that's a horror movie. Glee. No, that's a gay ass cover band or some shit like that. Fuck Glee. Glee is the worst thing ever. Um, I, I like that part in Community where uh, like the main guy goes like, uh, you know, he shoots some Glee members with a fucking paintball gun. You know the Community episode, and then he goes like. Uh, go away, 
Write some of your own damn songs. <laughs> That's me, literally. Just shooting some Glee members and, you know, saying how it is, really. I'm going on, but that, that's fucking great. Community is a great show. Um, how is this show called again? My grandma loves this, by the way. Of course she does. How is this called again? I, I forgot, but who cares? John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. You're the one that I want. Oh, they're not even saying it. They're not even showing it to. They're just showing a scene. Jesus Christ. Uh, I mean, I do like John Travolta, but it's mainly just in Pulp Fiction. I mean, Pulp Fiction is like the greatest thing ever, and I just don't get any of his other roles like this. I, I don't get it. Um, I mean, it's a, it's supposed to appeal to soccer moms, and it mostly does, so there you go. Oh yeah, yeah, Grease. It's a terrible name, by the way. Grease. Greasy. What the fuck is that name? <laughs> John Travolta looking at her ass, of course. That would probably be me, though. Looking at her ass and then at her pussy. If she was standing in front of me, I would probably look at her tits, but I believe she does, doesn't have any, so... John Travolta is a smart guy. I mean, that's why he got the Pulp Fiction role, so there you go. The only good thing he ever fucking did in his life. I fucking hate this song. Number eight. Uh, like, I don't get it. You know, my, my grandma loves it because it's harmless, it's like poppy and shit like that. It's like Abba, but bad. That's, ca that's kind of how it is, honestly. Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell, Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Oh yeah, this song. Like, I'm hearing the title and I'm like, oh yeah, it's this song. Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Um, my opinion on the song, I like it, but it's overplayed and it's kind of boring. So I'm kind of like, it's okay, you know. Yeah, just literally what I just said is, it's okay, but it's boring. That's how the song is. That's kind of Marvin Gaye to me in general. So there you go. He's kind of like, what am I supposed to do here? He's just looking at the girl. Do you want to get down? No. Oh, let's sing a song, I'm sure. That girl is standing there like she just just doesn't give a fuck. She's like sticking her tongue out. I don't want to be here. Yeah, I would. I mean, would have the same opinion though because you are standing with Marvin Gaye. That is pretty cool, but I don't know. It sounds like she's lip sim. Lip sim. Sim. I can't fucking speak. Lip syncing. There you go. It sounds like she's lip syncing. Fuck me. Fuck me. Fuck sake, man. It looks like she's lip syncing. There you go. I'm not gonna say that again. Number seven. Elton John and Kiki D. Don't go breaking my heart. It sounds like a fucking Billy Ray Cyrus tune. What a fucking voice. I do like Elton John though, but who the fuck is that bitch? What? I don't care. That fucking coconut haircut, what the fuck? Elton John is like, give me some of that air, bitch. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> what the fuck was that? Uh, Elton John was standing there in like a pink coat, you know, with his chest hair out. And Miss Piggy was lick uh, licking his fucking chest hair. What the fuck was that? It was like some kinky puppet shit like, like right there. Oh, that's really weird. Elton John not behind a piano. That's that's a weird side to build. I mean, I'm sorry. I love Elton John, but he looks like a fucking grandma. I mean, come on now. Number six. <laughs> he looks so cringe, but I mean, Billy Joel's better anyway. Uh, oh. Oh, say say say, yeah, I do love this song though, but I'm not a huge fan of the the girl is mine from Twitter. Paul McCartney and Michael Jackson, say say say. Say say say. I do really love this song though. This is pretty much their best collaboration too, so there you go. I mean, Paul McCartney is only already twice. I mean, the guy can market. Holy shit. 
when this duet with Sir Paul rocketed up the charts around the world. The ninth biggest... Oh, when Michael was brown and, you know, uh, down to earth. Oh, I, I love that, Michael. I'm not a huge fan of Wayne Zern. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a huge fan when he turned white, but he was great when he was black. Like, not because of his skin color, but because he was an actual, like, down-to-earth cool person back then. Then, after that, he became a pedophile. I mean, I'm not hating on MJ, but, I mean, after bad and, you know, dangerous and shit like that, I don't really like dangerous, but... After that success, like, you know, all the fame went to his head and... He didn't really speak to Paul McCartney and Freddie Mercury anymore, of Queen and shit like that, like the, the classic artist. It was amazing when he collaborated with those artists, but, or you know, just chilling with those artists, but then he became too big and I get it, you can't hang with those dudes anymore because they have their shit going on and you're too big to, you know, he, he, Michael did care though, Michael Jackson did care. But he was too famous to hang with anybody because go outside and everybody will be around you. So there you go. Harmonies, but it's the electrifying tension underneath that gives the song its propulsive energy. This might be my favorite Michael Jackson tune together with. Um, uh, one ghost tone, you know, ghost is great too from Blood on the Dance Floor. Fuck the band, but the album is kind of mediocre too. But it's, it's better than uh, Blood on the Dance Floor's entire, entire discography. I mean, come on. I just don't care for Dolly Parton. I really don't. She has like the most generic country sounding song ever. Or country sounding voice to me. It just sounds so generic and cliche in a way. She's like a walking contradiction. Wait, what? <laughs> they fucking cut her out the line. With a line like, cut shit out. <laughs> the fuck went wrong, yeah. I mean, with a line like that, yeah, and if you cut the line, I can't... I don't know what you're on about. Fucking dipshit. Probably like sexual shit, I mean... That's the only interesting thing about her, though. I'm not trying to be sexist here, but I mean, who fucking likes Dolly Parton? I mean, come on, man. Cole and Natalie Cole, unforgettable. The fuck is this? It sounds pretty good. Kind of sounds like classical music. Oh, this sounds real good. Yeah, classical. Oh wow! Like four violins turned into a man. That was pretty interesting. Adding daughter Natalie's tender yet soulful vocals to her father's gently wistful interpretation of Unforgettable results in a duet that is drop dead gorgeous. A top 50 this sounds gorgeous, I, I agree. Damn. It sold tons of albums, 7 million in the US alone. That's why, darling, it's incredible. This is from 91, really. It sounds like a fucking 50s tune or something. It sounds incredible, I love it. This is classic indeed. It looks and sounds like a 50s tune, so I'm not sure what they're on about. Is it really from 91? I don't believe that. I don't, they don't say it, so there you go. I have to believe them on the word. Which I don't, of course, so there you go. It's a great tune, I, lo I love this song. Damn. I've never heard it before. Okay, next one, boring. Next. Frank and Nancy Sinatra, something stupid. I know I stand in line until you think Ooh, this is kind of hold on, Frank Sinatra with a, with a whole check. I've already forgot her name. A couple of the lyrics in Unforgettable... Frank Sinatra is a great singer, I love him. Wait, what? What did you say there? I rarely listen to Watch Mario. Unforgettable may sound a little odd coming from a father and daughter, but that's nothing. 
I didn't read it again. A couple of the lyrics in Unforgettable may sound a little odd coming from a father and daughter, but that's nothing. In Something Stupid, Father Frank Sinatra and daughter Nancy sing lines like... And afterwards we drop into a quiet little place and have a drink or two. And... When time is right, your perfume fills my head, the stars get red and all the nights so... Wait, are those two... No, Frank Sinatra, my boy. No, don't say it. Don't say. Don't say you hit that. D don't. Don't say it. D no. There was this one uh, thing that was more mentioned. Not, I. I don't think it was Frank Sinatra, but there, there was like another dude that had like hardcore incest sex with like two young daughters. On bed or with a teenager, I believe, still minor, by the way, so he's probably in jail now, dead, I hope. And he went fucking crazy in that song, music video wise, too. Like, fuck's sake, man. I was that on TV, probably not, so there you go. Incest is Wincest. I mean, Frank Sinatra is a fucking dude, but I mean. I shouldn't say this, but don't bang your daughter. Don't do it, man. It's not worth it. <laughs> You're fucking Frank Sinatra. You, you, you literally have the greatest voice on human earth. You can literally get any fucking girl. But no, I want my daughter. You fucking dumbass. Number two, Bill Medley and Jennifer Warren's I've Had the Time of My Life. Oh, yeah, this one. Wasn't this a foreigner shooting? Or didn't foreigner cover this? <laughs> whiny tone I'm not hating on the song but I mean if you have like these overplayed fucking tunes I'm gonna make fun of them of course I am this dirty dancing mega hit reached number one in the US and was the biggest single of 1988 in Australia and the oh yeah it is a foreign tune isn't it the best it? song Oscar went to this seemingly romantic uh. duet the best thing about Foreigner is Jolyn Turner and he was of course in Rainbow that's the best thing about Foreigner and that era of Rainbow is fucking terrible, so, but they're still associated with Rainbow. That's, that's a good thing. Rainbow's a great band. Check that band out. <laughs> this song is not very good. It's kind of overrated, overplayed. It has feel, but it's overplayed. Alright, next song. Oh, number one, isn't it? Girl shaking her tits. Of course she has a desperate attention here. Number one, Diana Ross and Lionel Richie, Endless Love. Alright. That's an interesting uh, duo. Endless Love. Vocals and instrumental. Endless Love the movie, Endless Boredom. Endless Love the song, Endless Enchantment. The tunes Let's listen to this. Shut the fuck up. The Shut the fuck up. I want to hear this song. Shut the fuck up. I want to hear this song. Shut the fuck up. I want to hear this song. Shut the fuck up. I want to hear this song. Shut the fuck up. I want to hear this song. Shut the fuck up. I want to hear this song. Are you fucking kidding me? I want to hear this song. Shut up. There you go. Oh damn, that's great. Oh, I love this song. I love this song. This is a great song. Do you agree with our list? Which is Why did it bitch stop for like one minute fucking straight? I couldn't hear anything about the fucking song. Well, fuck, fuck the narrator in this clip. Fuck her. Fuck this bitch. Um. Oh fuck this out. There's a bike called Cowboy, how fucking dumb are you? Fucking retard companies. Let's, let's call it Cowboy, because you're a cowboy on a fucking bike. You're fucking retarded. Like from Michael and Paul, uh, no, not really. Paul was way better in Beatles, of course, and Michael Jackson. He never really was that good, in my opinion. He was better than Jackson 5, I think, but, you know, that's an unpopular opinion. 
Yeah, that's kind of like a 1% opinion right there. Like, he's better in the Jackson 5. But, you know, he was like... The, the reason he was better in the Jackson 5 is mainly because he was like getting beaten by his father. He got like the wife beating mentality. Uh, he got like beat the shit out of, uh, out of if he didn't do it good. And the songs were actually written by, you know, family members. So the songs were better structured. He sang better because, you know, he actually got a beating. And whenever he, he trembled into solo material, he, you know, he became huge and he didn't give a shit anymore. So it does make sense for my arguing right here, but most people are not going to uh, agree because people love MJ. But, you know, he's good, but he's better than Jackson 5. Queen and David Bowie, under pressure should have been here. What the fuck is up with that? Why, why wasn't that on the list? Fuck White Vida. Where's Under Pressure exactly? Where the fuck is that song? Say 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 is live, exactly. The title's retarded, by the way, but that's a great song. Paul McCartney, MJ, yeah. McCartney, MJ. Oh, people are so fucking generic. It's, it's either MJ um, McCarthy, yay, or it's fucking, um, or it's Under Pressure from Bowie and uh, Queen. It's either Bowie, Queen, and uh, fucking McCartney Jackson. It's, it's not even Stevie Wonder McCartney. No one gives a shit about that, so there you go. Oh, that's a good one. I actually really like this song. Uh, honorable mention, Scream from Michael and Janet Jackson. That's a good collaboration right there. That's a good one. Uh, yeah, Freddie, oh, wait, 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 what the fuck? There must be more than life to this with the two greatest of all time, Freddie Mercury and Michael Jackson, for sure. Say so Saves My Life, again, I just came from Michael, gross. Uh, Freddie Mercury and Montserrat Scabala, maybe. Who the fuck is that? Oh, isn't that the Oprah singer from um, from Barcelona? My grandma loves that song. I, I, I really love that song too, so I do really love that. That's, that's a good one. I'm gonna like it for that. If you if you are referring to that, but I suppose you do. That's really the only solo thing I think Freddie did, so in his lifetime, so there you go. Uh, what about Michael? Yeah, yeah, Scream, that's a good one. Uh, but they already had Say to Say, which is a better song, so there you go. Under pressure, of course. John Travolta as one of the weirdest singing voice I've ever heard. Exactly, what a weird fucking dude. As I recall, Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney also did "The Girl's Mind," which is terrible. I hate that song. Melody is fine, but the song is just so fucking cheesy. <laughs> it's, it's like a Paul McCartney and Wings song. Who fucking cares? Um. Uh, you know what's the thing? I mean, people are so fucking generic. I mean, if you read all these Under Pressure and uh, Minority of Scream and uh, CCSA comments, I mean, every comment is about CCSA. I mean, you know, if, if you're like a person, if you're like a human being, you can read, right? You can read, oh, people are, are already referring to CCSA. So I shouldn't say that, because people are already referring to that. So you shouldn't say that, but people are still doing that. People who actually read the say to say comments, actually read like the repetitive ass spam comments, and post the same comment also, fuck those people, which is like a lot of these people. If you're the first person that comments that, still fuck you, because, you know, it's a good song, and everyone is gonna comment that. I mean, come on now. Fucking normies. And the girl's mind is terrible. Ter terrible song. It it's a classic album though. I, I do like Thriller, but the girl's mind is the worst song on that album. So there you go. And the girl's mind. Michael Jackson from Paul McCartney should have been a tie with a no, fuck off. The girl's mind is terrible. I mean, change my mind about the girl's mind. That song fucking sucks. Where's Michael Jackson scream? That is a better song, but it's not per se a top ten worry. Worthy. Oh fuck yes. Uh, what about MJ plus Freddie Mercury, either of the recorded tracks or Nine Inch Nails plus Bowie's duet of Hurt? Oh fuck yes, I love that, I love that. Bowie and Nine Inch Nails, oh fuck yes. I mean that's actually a thing, that's actually a thing because uh, Bowie likes to work with the greats. So you work with, uh, in the 90s you work with uh, Nine Inch Nails and uh, Smashing Pumpkins. 
He was actually, if you don't believe me, like I've seen him in a Nine Inch Nails interview, you know, Nine Inch Nails and David Bowie, Trent Reznor. And I've seen Billy Corgan and um, David Bowie together on the couch too. So David Bowie is kind of like Rick, Rick Rubin in a way. He only wants to work with the greatest. So, you know, do whatever what you will. Billy Corgan is a great songwriter, but he's kind of an ass. So there you go. He makes great songs. Uh, Nick Jagger and David Bowie, you know. Michael and Janet Jackson. Yeah, that's a good one. What about Michael Jackson's I Just Can't Stop Loving You? What is that song again? From what era is that? It sounds like a fucking Van Halen song. What the fuck? I can't even, I can't even recall that. What the fuck? What about Aaron Neville and Linda Romnes? Uh, I have no idea how to pronounce that. I know I love you. I know I hate that fucking last name. That that's just a fucking terrible name. Under pressure, fairly. Yeah, I mean, stop being a generic normie. I mean, come on now. Uh, what about when you believe when you use the Mariah Carey? I've never heard the song before, so it's probably not not that good. Uh, yeah, I mean, under pressure. I'm gonna fuck off. It's a great song, but everyone is already saying that. So shut up. Paul Michael boners behind that, sure. I do get hard from Bowie though, or uh, Paul, but not per se from Michael. Uh, I, I, I don't really get hard from Paul either. You know, not as in Viagra uh, matters, but as in musically. I do get hard from Beatles though. <laughs> it's such a weird thing to say, but you know, the Beatles of course got a lot of that. David Bowie and Freddie Mercury under pressure. Where? Where? I mean, I get it, it is weird that it didn't include that, but what the fuck. I mean, oh, this is a good one, actually. Can you include this one? Simon and Garfunkel, The Sound of Silence. Can you include that tune? Because it is a duet, but they are a band, technically. So, is it, you know, otherwise you could have included Death Punk too, because they are a duet too. But that's gonna be very broad, so I don't think they can do that. But that's a good one, though. That, that's, that's a good comment right there, I'm gonna like that. Top 10 Motown extra song. What the fuck is that? Motown. Yeah, Queen and David Bowie. Who would have guessed when you believe? Oh, Maynard and China Moreno. That's, that's a good one. Uh, that's, I believe, from uh, the Deftones, The Passenger, which is pretty much their best song because Maynard is on it. I mean, come on now. Um, don't really care about new metal, but that is a good pick. I mean, to have made it from anything really is good, so there you go. Don't really care for uh, Moreno or whatever his name is. I mean, all these comments about Bowie and Mercury. I mean, yeah, they're great, but everyone is already saying it. Freddie Mercury and Montserrat Cabela. Yeah, Barcelona, fuck yes. I fucking love that song. Hell yeah. Oh, Barcelona is great, I love that. What about June Carter and Johnny Cash? And I don't think I've heard that one before. I don't think I've heard it, but it sounds good. Stop dragging my heart around uh, Stevie Nicks and Tom Petty. That sounds interesting too. All right. No Bing Crosby and David Bowie, but good picks. It's an interesting one. Michael Jackson. <laughs> I mean, all these comments are just say, 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 and Bowie, Queen. I mean, come on now. <laughs> this is so fucking generic. Uh, no, no, not, not the Under Pressure song. I love Under Pressure, but... I mean, I mean the fucking... Um, uh, the fuck, the, the comments are so generic. They're literally just all the same shit, so fuck the comments. Um, but I do like the comments that went out of their way to actually mention the other, you know, picks on the list. Because those are the real MVPs. They actually, uh, you know, uh, talk about the whole fucking list instead of only one pick. Fuck those lists. Or fuck those people, rather. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, let me know what you want to see in the upcoming video. Like and subscribe to the channel for future lives as well. Let me know what you thought about the video. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.